Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Although the Navy has had some enormous achievements throughout its history and has overcome countless challenges, incidents have unfortunately tested the resilience and adaptation of military forces in the face of emergencies. Some of these cases involved failed landings on aircraft carriers, which have been difficult for pilots to master. Furthermore, in this environment, many factors can result in an accident, such as inoperable arresting gear, inadequate positioning of the aircraft, or wrong human judgment. Since the conception of the aircraft carriers, these events have occurred, such as various incidents of miscalculating aircraft landing on the USS Enterprise between the 1940s and 1960s. With the increase in these events, systems were developed to combat these misfortunes including both the implementation of devices and emergency barriers, which trap airplanes that fail to stop while on the runway. If the plane is in a state of emergency and must land on the ship, the crew quickly clears the runway area of any obstacles that could cause an accident. Immediately, the hydraulic or electrical system raises the nets along the flight deck to engage the wings or landing gear of the distressed plane. Of all these systems that involve aircraft landing on aircraft carriers, the arresting gear functions as the main tool to decelerate the aircraft during the short run of the ship's runway. This mechanical system works from several steel wires distributed along the runway, which are hooked to the aircraft's tail hook and then slow the plane with the hydraulic damping system. Its development started with a rudimentary placement of five wire ropes across the aft part of the flight deck. Through the years, better technology and materials have been used to increase the process's efficiency and the pilot's safety. Its complexity and the risk behind its operation require extensive training by the crew and pilots, who must know the entire procedure. In addition, there are specific positions for this, such as landing signal officers who are in charge of guiding the pilots and adjusting their final phase of the approach. However, this technology and arduous training have not eliminated incidents and emergencies on these vessels, considering the many factors that must be controlled for operations to go perfectly. This occurred in March 2016 when the arresting cables broke while an E-2C Hawkeye was landing. Yet the skill of the pilots allowed the plane not to crash and cause serious damage. Training that we've done for you know, years of uh, flying, I mean, my, myself, I've been flying for almost 12 years now. Uh, we were able to hold our set attitude uh, and Matt was able to expertly kind of keep us climbing away and get us away from that water. In addition to the arresting system, 
Aircraft carriers have other tools that facilitate aircraft operations with vessels. One of these is the EMALS, or Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System. Developed in the previous decade to replace and improve the capabilities offered by the steam catapults, which accelerate the aircraft to take off from the aircraft carrier. Due to the limitations of traditional systems, the EMALS development program sought to create better control during the launch by allowing gradual, continuous acceleration and reducing the stress level supported by the vessel structure. To test this technology, the Navy installed the system on the Gerald R. Ford CBN-78, initially performing launches without load and with dead loads to demonstrate the integrity of the catapult. Such technological advancements were also evident in improvements in the landing process by implementing a new system called the Joint Precision Approach and Landing System, or JPALS. Its purpose is to guide pilots during their approach to the aircraft carrier using real-time information given by GPS, so aircraft can land safely in any conditions, even at night, reaching accuracies close to one meter. Its first implementation occurred with the test carried out aboard the USS Abraham Lincoln using F-35C aircraft, which showed positive results that allowed future projections to be implemented on other aircraft. There's five sensors spread throughout the ship that collect GPS data. Um, our algorithms process it and tries to find the best solution, user position solution or ship position solution, and it sends that uh, data out to the aircraft, and it's a one-way data link with the F-35s. On the other hand, the development of the advanced arresting gear brought improvements in landing processes by requiring less manpower and maintenance time. This system uses energy-absorbing water turbines connected to an induction motor which allows better control of the arresting forces. Although it requires less personnel to operate, its complexity requires detailed training to achieve its correct operation. This involves both the operation and the maintenance processes of the system, simulating workstations and hardware so that the operator knows the methodology in addition to knowing all of the components, including the energy absorber system, cable shock absorber system, and hydraulic power unit assembly. These learning processes on arresting gear maintenance are complemented by the work of machine shop operators on aircraft carriers such as the CBN-78, who support all ship operations by manufacturing or repairing critical parts for the vessel and the entire strike team. This area is divided into two main groups consisting of the hull technicians who have to deal with the vessel structure and piping systems and the machinery repairmen who focus on supporting the maintenance operations of these several devices inside the ship. Their experience allows them to collaborate with the operators of the detention system by inspecting and repairing the different components that make up the mechanism, including the steel cable, which can wear out over time and cause fatigue failures after several work cycles. Coming down here, we work with a lot of machines. We're turning and, and burning, as we like to say. We're welding. We can, we can take flat pieces of metal or tubing or stock and turn it into whatever we want almost down here. 
Implementing new technologies and procedures on aircraft carriers encouraged by the conditions of their runways is not exclusive to this environment. Given that the vast majority of air traffic departs from land-based airports, the evolution of runway safety issues has led to the development of initiatives that reduce the risk of incidents at these locations. One of these has a fairly simple but certainly crucial concept, which is the implementation of runway safety areas that serve as the primary safety mitigation for runway excursions. These excursions usually occur when the length of the runway is not sufficient for the aircraft to stop during landing. Therefore, safety areas are created to offer extra space for these aircraft, preserving specific characteristics such as smooth leveling, good drainage, load capacity, and the absence of obstacles. In addition, these areas have the support of emergency tools, such as aircraft rescue and firefighting equipment, and snow removal equipment. However, over the years, more systems have been implemented that complement each other and improve the safety of the track in the event of an emergency. Since the early 2000s, several airports began installing EMOS, also known as arrestor beds, designed to stop aircraft that run off the runway. Many of these airports were built before the 1980s, so they were not designed on current regulations that mandate the implementation of runway safety areas. This encouraged the development of this bed of absorbing materials placed at the end of the runway that can crush under the weight of an aircraft. As the tires sink into the light material, the plane decelerates rapidly as it moves across the EMOS platform. To install this system, the ground at the end of the runway is prepared by grading and excavating a section to lay a solid base of rock fill and asphalt. Then, an anchorage system is applied if green EMOS is used, which uses several layers of glass foam on the surface. In other cases, prefabricated EMOS blocks made of cellular cement are placed on the prepared surface according to a previous demarcation. Once the arrangement is complete, the joints between blocks are sealed to give stability to the surface. This method is faster considering that green EMOS requires a settling time of one month and a total construction time of three to four months. As the aviation industry develops, concern also increases about maintaining safe procedures and ensuring the well-being of pilots and passengers. This has resulted in innovative solutions, both civil and military, that have considerably reduced the number of tragic accidents. The emergence of new technologies will only bring better results until these events are eliminated. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.